Light is healing. In syncretism, the subject of light is crucial and fundamental. To understand how light works and its properties, and in particular its healing property, is so, so crucial with syncretism. This is why I'm with LifeWave. LifeWave understand light and how it works and how it heals. These patches emanate signals into the body. The body, being already self-wise, knows how to utilize those signals for regeneration, for energy, etc. So that's why I would say go LifeWave and go to the light. I'm very, very happy. Dean, can I have the portable? Yep. I'm very, very happy to come to this Global Sciences. I was listening to the speakers talk and I realized that we're all one big family. And it's no shock to you, but the planet is going to change. And what needs to be done is we need to graduate, raise our frequency, and become gods ourselves. And what I'm going to talk to you today about is ascension. I guess maybe I'm supposed to use this talk? No, you're fine. Okay. I'm working on it. Okay. And ascension is a frequency. Now, I spent some time in France just in June, and again last year I went to England, I went to Turkey, and I've been working with the grid for a long time. And what I have met up with is a group of advanced souls called the Knights Templar. They engineered the grid many, many hundreds of years ago, and I want to t remind all you people, who controls the grid controls the consciousness of humanity. So what's very, very important is that we learn to become masters of the grid. Now the first thing that happened to Dean and I in 1968 is we lost three hours or four hours of time and we met with an entity called Katumi. And Katumi instructed us to build a pyramid for my then three-year-old son and my five-year-old son because basically my three-year-old son was a dyslexic which really was tuned to a different frequency. And it was very hard for him to function in the physical world. So it was necessary for us to build a pyramid which is an interplanetary 
inner communication uh, device, it's an antenna, into the grid. And what I, I want to teach you people is how to learn to use the grid so that you can prepare for ascension. Now I wish they leave the lights on, but I'm just gonna put the grid up here because I'm sure everybody knows what the grid looks like. Okay, you wanna just turn that on? <laughs> the grid is like the nervous system of the planet. You can leave the lights on, it doesn't matter. I'll just leave it up there. The, uh, they can see it. The grid is like the nervous system of the planet. And what it says, Kutumi, I believe, is John the Beloved, and what he has directed is when 144,000 of us learn to control this nervous system, then the planet will move into the photon, when the planet moves into the photon belt, you people will be able to control this grid. There will be no destruction. We will move into a higher frequency, and, there w and the planet will not go through what we hear other people say about the destruction of the planet. So that's important to learn how to raise our frequency. And what I want to start to do today is to teach you how to prepare for that. Now how many of you have heard that we're going through the photon belt? What does that mean to you? A photon is a particle of light that is neutral. It's not positive, it's not negative. So when your body is filled with a lot of neutral energy, if you don't prepare to raise your frequency, then, as it says in Revelations, you can burn up from the inside out. So let's go ahead and prepare. And what, what has been said in the Bible, uh, they've talked about with Moses using the rods, he could use the ley lines to part the waters. So if you prepare and raise your frequency, you can use the ley lines to control the grid too. And this has been the history that the Bible should have taught us, but has not really taught us. And so that's what we need to get into. I'm gonna show you a picture of a pyramid. This is a pyramid and it creates a standing column or wave. You are, with your chakra system, a standing column or wave. And if you, 144,000 of you, learn to control that standing column or wave, you can control the weather, you can go to any point on the planet and bring peace and harmony. That's what you need to learn to do. And uh, you know, it's, it's, it's good to watch nature and learn from nature. Uh, you know, we have spin. We have spin in a standing column or wave. We have spin in our own vortex, in our chakras. We have a left-hand spin and we have a right-hand spin. When I used to come to the conference, my husband and I would sell these stars of David. The stars of David are very important because all the engineering of the grid has been done by utilizing the stars of David. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, when David wanted to build the temple in Jerusalem, uh, there was a queen named Hifchitsut, which was probably the queen in the Sheba. She had her temple, David was building his temple, and down in the Saudi, uh, in the, uh, down south from there, they would have put a large obelisk, the unfinished obelisk. Some people have gone to Egypt and they've looked at this obelisk and they don't understand what the obelisk is about. That would have been the triangle that would have created the first part of the Star of David. When we get into the engineering of what the Templars had done, we will show you how the Stars of David have been used and the Pentagon has been used to control the grid. Isn't it interesting? that the Masons, which were a direct descent from the, uh, the Knights Templars, put in Washington uh, an obelisk, which is, how many of you know what an obelisk is? The Washington Monument is an obelisk. I don't wanna be using these words, but there are antennas to tune the grid. And that's what that whole area was, was designed for. But then, the military came along and built a Pentagon, which is a five-pointed star to pull 
the God Force energy out of what was designed into the Washington Mall area. So what is necessary and what is very, very good is that we learn how to use the vortexes to control the grid and how to use our own bodies. And that's what I am going to attempt to do in our workshop if there is one brought about. Oops, that's upside down. There we go. I'll get it. Now, medicine wheels are a right hand spin. Uh, they are put on a vortex which comes out of the ground. They are an antenna. If you look at the weather patterns, you have high pressures, which are clockwise pressures areas. High pressures take energy from the earth up. See, these are things that we need to learn if we're going to eventually become grid engineers. A low pressure area or a left hand spin is a downshoot area or a low pressure and that takes energy down to the earth. Some people like to put negative and positive symbols on these things. To move energy, you have to have both spins. One isn't good, one isn't bad. We need them both. However, what, what I do in the workshop sometimes is I will take your jewelry and I will see what kind of spin you have on it and if it's taking energy out of your heart chakra because women and people like to wear jewelry here, if it's got a negative spin on it, it's taking energy away from you. You might like to reverse it and wear it under something, under your shirt, and maybe that'll put the energy in. So when we're working with a grid, it's necessary to learn how to use the spin. And you see, with the use of a pyramid and with the use of an obelisk, you can definitely see how ley lines can be formed. But I will tell you that once you become a fifth dimensional being, and I am very, very pleased because when I was in the speakers meeting today, I feel that the lineup of speakers here is very wonderful and all of them are teaching you how to begin to use your aura through sound, through many different methods and, and it's a wonderful lineup of speakers. But when, you, when we, we do go into the photon belt, believe me people, you're going to have to know how to use your spin because you're going to be in a neutral because photons are neither positive or negative, they're neutral. So you're going to have to add to the grid the power that is needed and that's what you're gonna to have to start looking, working with. Now, the Templars where, where I'll try to get this on right. This is an area in France near where the Val d'Oeuvre was, but the Templars wanted to create a new city-state there around the 1300s, the beginning of the 1300s. Of course, some of you may know that Jacques de Molay was the Grand Master and that in 1307 they were captured and put to death but they had the instruments that control the grid, the grail, the grail bowls, which when they are played, activated the grid. But this is the engineering, how they dealt with the ley lines that created all of this. And again, and I will remind you each time, who controls the grid controls the consciousness of humanity. And many times, uh, Dean has had speakers on the harp and on extremely low frequency energy these are all devices which are designed to do you people in. And it is time that we take the responsibility, and you know if a bunch of us got together, we could, like the, tal uh, the Talos hum, we actually could get together, create a vortex, and pull the energy down and reverse it all of you, I hope you know that when you feel, because I've been in conferences before, and the last one was at the USPA in Kentucky, I felt that 
there were devices that were put into that room to put everybody to sleep. In five minutes in one lecture, everybody was asleep. I didn't go to that lecture, but I felt that those people were being mind controlled by just the devices of using the grid. And again, when you feel that happening to you, you had better start doing some chanting or some pounding of the feet or whatever you've been trained to do to reverse it, put a lot of white energy into your own aura, make a mirror out of it and send the energy back. And when a, gr a group of you start doing that, you will destroy the instruments that are being used. And you're gonna hear about a lot of these instruments at this conference. So it's, it's good to be aware and it's good if you feel your spin energy is being controlled, just reverse it. it it's, everybody says, how do we do this? Well, that's what we're going to work on when we come to our, our, uh, our seminar, our workshop, if we have it. So you can see what we have here. The Knights Templar were probably the engineers, but it, the, it, after the crucifixion of Jesus, the, he went to an area over here by Rimless Chateau, you can see it on the left-hand side, and there they had a lovely fountain called the Valdu, which it means the Valley of God, and there the Magdalene and her family, which if you're not familiar with, with the early kings of France, from Clovis up to Dagobah II were supposed to be the offspring of Jesus and Mary. And there's a couple books out, one of them, The uh, Woman with the Alabaster Jar by Margaret Starberg, who she was, her husband was, in, was a West Point graduate. And when she went there, she heard all of this, Holy Blood, Holy Grail talks about it. I know it's a little bit hard, but as people have said, the history of this earth has not been told us, and it's time. Where I learned the history of the earth is by communicating with people. They're not really discarnate, they're people that have graduated, and the Knights Templar are a wonderful group of men who have graduated. Uh, part of the reason why I, I went with Robin Quayle, who's gonna be your next speaker, to France last year was because I remembered a past life. I was sued for practicing medicine. I'm a homeopathic physician and I was sued for practice medicine. When I went back and looked at the past life that it was dealt with, I had an herbal garden and a hospital for the Knights Templar. I was a woman, I was not a man, and I raised their horses. And during the time in, thir in the early 1300s when they were destroyed, they came in and set my horses free. Well, my, I set my horses free before I was murdered, burned at the stake. But the people that were suing me for the practice of medicine were the exact same people that had done me in, in France. So I felt dealing with past lives, it was necessary for me to go to France and look at that. And when I was in France with Robin last year, I met a lovely bunch of Knights Templars. I don't know if you know the history of France, but there was a lovely group of people called the Cathars who had built many castles, who worked with the grid. Their job was to become perfect. This area has been very blessed with people that wish to raise the consciousness. From this little area, the Knights could engineered it in such a way so that they could have controlled the whole nervous system of the planet, which is the grid, and helped humanity raise their consciousness, okay? And the Knights are still functioning on the fifth dimensional level. They're still active over there. When our little boss went through, there was about 25 of us in the group, when our little boss went through the Languedoc, which is the area in southern France near the Pyrenees, uh, suddenly we got followed with maybe 1,800 discarnate people. We were light and these people were ready to, to do something, so uh, about the middle of the tour one morning I went down for breakfast and when I got up, came up, my person who was next to me, my roommate Barbara was a dowser, and when I said, Barb, I feel like a ton of bricks are on me, what she did is she doused out and the group had 1,800 people attached to them because we were light going through an area and they collected so what three people did, we went out and created a vortex. We found an energy point, we created a vortex, we called in a mothership, 
And we created that vortex, and at that point in time, 12 nights came around, and I've been working with them ever since. They were interested in help, helping, you see, people, they cannot work with the physical. So what is needed is people who wish to be part of the answer take the responsibility and work with these in it people who, and always ask who they are and create the vortexes so that they can do the grid work that needs to be done. This is a planet of free will. My perfect love for you, my creation, is your perfect freedom. And, and as you hear from other speakers that are coming, and I think it's a wonderful um, group of people, you will hear that probably we're a hybrid. And we're, we're a combination of, of Arterians, Syrians, Palladians. And once we become fifth dimensional beings, we're going to be able not just to deal with planet Earth, we're going to be wonderful, wonderful beings of light out in the cosmos. So it's very, very necessary for us to start realizing our responsibility. And of course, you know, I really feel this, that the reason why all the extraterrestrials, when we find out the history that have been controlling us, is, is they are, are a little bit afraid of our power. So it's necessary for us to begin to learn how to use our own vortexes and begin to be engineers and responsible. And there's w people here that are gonna teach you how to clear your aura. There's people here that are gonna teach you how to use music. So it's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. Well, this year, I went back with Robin to France. There was just a small group of us, and there were only 12 of us. And they, w this group wanted to start a community up there around Rindless Chateau. And so they started having speakers, and David Icke and uh, Margaret uh, Starward, Starward came to be our speakers. Well, we didn't listen to their talk on Sunday afternoon, which was solstice. We started dancing around a medicine wheel, which a German, we were in a garden, Toby owned this garden, and he'd put in a medicine wheel. So we danced all afternoon around that medicine wheel. Now dancing around a medicine wheel, people is going to create a vortex. And that vortex was designed to retune an area. How many of you people have, have heard of Henry Lincoln and his search for holy blood, holy grail? Let's see hands. Some of you have. He has searched for 10 years. There was a priest that went to Rinless Chateau in 1895, Berenger Chornay, and what he did is he created towers, gardens, and he was paid by the Habsburg family. The Habsburg family are in control to redesign and reconstruct the grid system to take your freedoms away from you. So Henry Lincoln had been studying, trying to figure out what it is that Beringer was doing up there. Some people say that he was found a lot of treasury, be, treasure because the Knight's treasure is there, the Cather's treasure is there, the Visigod treasure is there. See, after uh, the Gauls are, uh, s sacked Rome in the 600s, all the treasure was brought to Rinless Chateau. So Rinless Chateau has a history of buried treasure. But it really wasn't the treasure, it was the Habsburgs and the power who probably created your new world government actually way back in the late 1800s were paying, was paying this parish, <coughs> parish priest in France to re-engineer the grid system so that they could control your minds. So what we did up there on the, that solstice afternoon is we danced, and we danced, and we danced. And we went back on Monday and danced again. Now, Mount Bucharest is like, uh, well, it was probably the story of uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. It, it, it uh, if you, the planes won't, aren't allowed to fly over it because when they fly over it, the instruments go like that which means that 
The area is highly magnetic. And one thing that we learned when we, we started back putting in medicine wheels and obelisks, I'm diverting from the story a little bit, but I'll come back to it, is we always had flyovers. And what my friend who co-authored our book, Pyramid Energy, The Philosophy of God, The Science of Man, said to us is when we started putting up these obelisks and um, stone circles, that the Earth is gridded through satellites with a magnetic field. And once we created a new vortex, guess what, people? We put a hole in their magnetic grid. So the minute that we did that, we had planes flying over. The first time this really happened is in 1983, Dean and I were down near Mobile, and we were putting in a, a, an obelisk. And we hadn't had it up more than 20 minutes, and we were putting bricks around it to hold the uh, obelisk up. And two fighters came out of Pensacola, flying treetop level. They came up to the obelisk and went, did a 180 and went right back to Pensacola. And ever since then, whenever we started doing uh, any gridding, we always had fighter pilots. And these fighter pilots, our planes, were flying treetop level, and oftentimes when we were putting in some of the first wheels, we could, they were so low that we could look right up and see their faces. Now, if they weren't looking for something on the ground, you've got my, you know. But the thing that Toby, who owned the garden, said after we did the engineering, he said he's lived there for two years, he's never seen a fly. Maybe once in the summer that they're there, they'll see one plane. After we did the gridding, he saw as many as three, four, five planes fly over daily to see what we had done in the area. Now, on Saturday, on fr Monday, we went back to the garden and did another Native American dance. And I was standing behind some, we were in a big circle, and I was standing behind some cedar bushes, and that's when I learned the knights came to me and told me what, had, what we had done. I was looking through the cedar trees at Mount Bucharest, and there was a big uh, cloud over it. You've seen the, like the clouds over Mount Shasta, how they look. They're, they're definitely probably hidden UFOs and clouds. And what I saw was a, a, a little spider had come out of the, um, out of the, the cedar tree and was just hanging there. And you, you know, the Native Americans say, you look at the animals, you see what's happening. Well, Toby came around to do the last dance and he sent that spider asunder. And at that moment, the spider fell from the tree. Two white objects came out of the base of Bugaresh. Now, Bugaresh is the mountain that they probably did a lot of gritting around. And you can see it over there in the lower uh, corner, that's Mount Bucharest at one of the points of the stars. It's right here. Can you see Bucharest? Right there? Anyway, when I was watching Bucharest, a voice came to me and said, because of your gritting, two, uh, the, the grays can no longer work with the grid system in this area. And the grays are not so, such friendly people. So in other words, we undid what Beringer Sonier had done in building the Magdalene Tower and all the gardens up at Rinless Chateau. We had undone that gridding and created a new grid which changed the frequency so that they could no longer work. And what the Knights really wanted me to come here and tell you is that they're willing to work with any of you who want to work with them, and they will teach you how to regrid your own area. All you have to do is do meditation and work with them. And they will be glad to work with you in such a way so that you can bring peace through the grid. Sound, color, all of this helps. And remember, and I will say it lots of times because I'm a school teacher, whoever controls the grid controls the consciousness of humanity. I hope you learn that. And the important thing with alchemy, because Rinless Chateau is one of the birthplaces of alchemy, and since I've written a book called The Alchemist Handbook to Homeopathy, 
But you change the energy, you change the manifestation of the mass. So if you change the energy throughout the grid, you change the whole consciousness of the mass. And when we go through the photon belt, people, if you don't learn how to control your own spin factors in your chakras, then what it says in Revelations will be a reality. You will burn up from the inside out. It's not something to be scared of because I can look at most of you and most of you have already done it. It's just being conscious of it. And any time that you want to work with your angels, you know it's done for you. There's no problem. So it's just a matter of taking the responsibility and demanding to be part of the answer instead of part of the problem. Part of the problem is living in the fear, allowing, you know, if you re look at the four horsemen of the Acropolis, you have the first horseman, which is white, and if you enter the base chakra, activate all the chakras, you wear the crown on the top of your head and you graduate. And I'm, I haven't looked at this for a while, but I think the next horseman is red, and red is anger. So if you allow anger to control your base chakra, you're in trouble. The next horseman is black, and that's fear. And he even carries around with him uh, a little balance. Do I have enough money to feed my family? Do I have enough grain in my stores? Do I have all of these things? You know, this is fear. And of course, if you allow this to happen, then you ride the pale horse, which means you don't open up your heart chakra. So that, if you really look at revelations, and this is what Katumi has taught me to look at, because I believe Katumi to be um, John the Beloved. He was also St. Francis of Assisi. He is very gently and very kindly telling you how to prepare yourself to raise your frequency and to graduate, okay? So that's what my message is here for you people today is prepare yourself. Now getting back to my story at Rinless Chateau. So when we all got ready to load into the cars and go, we walked down to the base at Rinless Chateau and there were black, big black spiders moving their eggs. Again, what does this tell you if you follow the animals in the Native American? The grid system is spider woman according to the Native American. And you had big black spiders moving their eggs. In other words, those that have a negative could no longer have a base at the base of Bucharest. Okay, I see some of you going to sleep. <laughs> Spin your chakras and wake up. <laughs> I know, I go to sleep too, because sometimes when the nights work with you, I'm gonna counterdict myself. You do go to sleep and you do go into a subconscious area and you do meet with them. Uh, they are lovely, lovely, lovely entities and I think one of the reasons why I was invited to speak was it's time, they say it's time, <laughs> that you start working with them because they want to help retune the grid. What a lot of you, and, and this is history again, what a lot of you don't know is how many of you have heard that in 1325 to 1350, something happened to the native population out in the Southwest and vast numbers of tribes disappeared? How many of you know that? Raise your hands, a few of you. Again, what we're talking about is the Knights Templars were never captured. Their wealth was never captured. A few people like, uh, like Jacques de Molay and the heads of the Knights Templar in 1307, what they did is they sacrificed themselves, but they let the, a large group of, of knights, because these were the fi finest fighting unit and they were also the finest sailors. They had one of the biggest sailing fleet. Nobody knows what happens to their ships. Nobody knows what happened to their treasures. Nobody knows what happened to the Ark of the Covenant that they had. Nobody knows what happened to the grail bowls that they had. They all just up and disappeared. 
the Shroud of Turin was also a, 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 one of their treasures. So nobody knows what happened to all these things. I believe that out of the five sailing vessels, three of them came to the United States. And what they tried to do in the United States is re-engineer the grid. They went out to the Southwest, and unfortunately, because there was sabotage, it was blown up, and now you have crater, uh, you have um, media, the meteor crater out there, and and you have stories where the Indians were eating and they just disappeared. What did they do, people? They changed frequency. Whether they wanted to or not, they went from one frequency up to a higher frequency. And part of the reason why you have the story of Wounded Knee, if you talk to the people that were involved with Wounded Knee, the, the original one, is the Hopi Indians, which were from that area, came up and said that if you start dancing, well, you can put on ghost shirts. And you know, nobody knows what happened at the Little Bighorn, but Crazy Horse and uh, Sitting Bull and other uh, shamans danced for three days before Custer came up on him. Now Custer was, there was only 290 people in Custer's army that were killed, but there were thousands out there. So the, the story that everybody died is not a real one. If you're er ever interested, you should go and look in the history. They said that the, these troops became so frightened that they turned the guns on themselves and shot themselves. Whatever was going on, there was a lot of magic going on, and it was all done because of the dancing. And I don't know how many of you have ever been to a, uh, where they put, you know, the dancing around the tree, uh, Sundance, I don't know how many, but it's a very beautiful thing, and the natives are opening up to it. And yes, through the dancing, this is what the Hopis told this group, that if we go and dance, then we can see our, pro our happy hunting ground. And so that's why a band of Indians went up to Sitting Bull and was trying to talk him into doing the dance, and of course Sitting Bull was murdered. And then on their way back down to uh, Rosebud, Bud, or whatever, somebody may know the history better than I do, that's when the cavalry captured him and murdered that little band at Wounded Knee. But you have to understand that to the Native American, the drums were as illegal to have as the guns. So you understand that the dancing and getting involved with frequency for ascension was dangerous to the cavalry. So they confiscated their drums as well as their guns. And that's why a lot of drum was a pot with a little piece of rawhide. That's what became their drums. And then they just disbanded them whenever they needed to. But this is all history. And the important thing here is that we learn vibration, we learn frequency, and we learn how to start tuning ourselves in. Some of you may have remembered our stars. I'm gonna show them to you again. Is that backwards? Yep. There you go. It's important, the Star of David, and I, I know it takes hot, but you see, when, the, when you get the long top stroke, you get a clockwise motion. And what we used to do, my husband and I, and what we will do in the workshop is muscle test you and show you where the clockwise will take energy away from you and the counterclockwise will put energy into you. So it's, it's necessary to learn about spin. Somebody says, well, I don't see any different in those stars. Do you see the difference in the stars? You see the long stroke up here is this way, this way, this is the long stroke. Where in this one you have the long stroke here, here, here. And actually, you know, the swastika that Hitler had everybody wear was a, uh, was a clockwise swastika so that all your energy was given to him all the time. That was the, the nature of that symbol. 
So be very, very cautious of symbols that you wear on your body. How many of you are dowsers? Okay. How many of you use your dowsing? I hope so, because it's very, very important to douse these things out. I just spoke at the dowsing uh, organization. It's at Lindenville now, but it used to be Danville. And I very much appreciated the two speakers, uh, Terry Ross and uh, McCoy. The thing that they said, and that, that when you're dowsing, you're using the photon or the lights. And McCoy can actually take and look at a person and take the aura and rake through their aura, aura from a distance by dowsing and clear that aura. We have one speaker that might talk a little bit about that. You people who are all dowsers can do that. We need to start doing those things. We need to start using the tools that we have. I know dowsers who know how to douse, and, and I was just talking to Ed over here who, who is going to be speaking to you about instruments, and we have a friend. I went to Turkey with him. He's into flower essence, uh, into uh, essential oils, but also uh, he has all the instruments. And two months ago, something happened to him where he became paralyzed and put himself in bed, and his wife's a nurse. And of course, what he did is he went to the medical profession, spent lots of money, and he called me up about three weeks ago, and he says, can you help me? Well, I'm a homeopath. I'm a radionics operator. I doused him out and says, Ted, you've got a spider bite. Oh, possibly because my foot's all inflamed down here. And so what I said is, so I sent him a program, but the one that's working with Ed back here, we were talking about it, and he said, did you use your instruments? No. Did you use your oils? No. So we have all these things many times, but we forget to use them. And dowsers forget to douse when they get in trouble. It's fine to douse for everybody else, but it's not fine to douse for yourself. And we have, we're important people, so we need to start doing these things for ourselves. So that's what's important, and it's important to know spin. The next thing I'm going to talk to you about is a little bit about the essential oils and changing the frequency within your own body. Is that right? There you go. You've heard Dr. Gary Young speak here a couple years ago. I'm in essential oils. There are other people like Donna who's in essential oils. The important thing is, is there's 188 places in the Bible. And of course, the Magdalene, Mary Magdalene herself, met magnificence in oils. It's very, very bad that because she used the oils to heal people and to raise their frequency within their bodies that they called her a prostitute, even, even uh, in those days. But what Dr. Young has, has worked with Bruce Tanio in, in a device to measure frequency and the healthy body, and it's megahertz, people, from 60 to 78 megahertz, you won't have a disease. But when we go into the photon belts, you had better raise the frequency within your etheric body and your astral body and your causal body. Because it is from these bodies that you can control things. You can control the light. And the first thing that you need to do is raise the frequency. Now, if it was good enough for Moses and good enough for Mary and good enough for Jesus to use the oils to raise frequency, it should be good enough for you. And the one thing that Young Living, and I don't want to promote too much, states is that they give you the frequency. And um, one thing that w interested me when we were in France, and I hope I can put this on there right, is... Is that right? Okay. In the middle of your brain is an organ or a gland called the amygdala gland. 
And what I learned, because we had Mary uh, Margaret Starberg talk to us about the lady with the alabaster jar, the amygdala in French means Magdalene. And it is through this gland that you actually raise frequency. Science is beginning to understand that this gland stores trauma from past lives, from this life, and maybe even possibly from future lives. To clear your aura, you must get rid of the trauma. And I don't know how many times that I've applied oils on people and all of a sudden they started going into trauma. And so we've had to do an emotional clearing on them. One of the first ones was a little girl who was prematurely born. She, had, she hadn't walked, she was nine years old. She hadn't stood by herself. And she had gone to the Seriners and about three weeks away from having major surgery where they were gonna take her, her tendons and split them and do a whole bunch of, of what medical people do. Her parents asked me if I could work with her. And I said, well, possibly, I just got these oils, let's try something. So we held her feet and we held her, her head and started pulsing her body with Valor and with other oils as, as people in Young Living have done. And this girl went back to her birth trauma. Since she was a premature baby, what they do to premature, to, they stick needles in their feet and they stick needles in their head to keep them alive. And she started reliving this. And what she started doing is screaming. Now this was one of the first ones that I ever did and I was terrified because my teacher, Gary Young, said never to let people go into trauma. Well, I wished I had because I stopped it. But the mother called me up that evening and said for the first time Jessica had stood by herself because we had cleared some of the trauma out of her auric field. This is the best special thing that the oils have. And you can come back and talk to Dottie. She's a massage therapy who's working, a therapist who's working with me, or Donna over here. And we can try to talk you through how to do emotional clearings and help you pick some of the oils. Is there anybody, uh, any other young living oil distributors in the audience? My goodness, there's a few of us. What's important is that we use the oils to clear the electromagnetic field. Now, when we were in Turkey, Gary was doing an, a, a clearing and he got into an emotional clearing. He got into a, a situation where the person started an emotional so he sent her back to her seat. Well, I being a homeopath saw that she, tears were coming out of her eyes. Any homeopath would walk up to her and give her arnica to balance her electromagnetic field. And I told her that I would be glad to work with her. So to make a long story short, because I only have 10 minutes, uh, what happened is that night she went down and it seems that her father was part of the Philadelphia experiment. How many in here do not know what the Philadelphia experiment was? Nobody. <laughs> and what happened is 13 hysterical people came back to my room and says, <gasps> the Eldridge appeared out in, in, we were just five miles from the GNC. We were at Ege University, which means Aegean University. So we were just five miles away and they had gone out for supper on a floating restaurant and these 13 people came back hysterical saying oh, the boat appeared and can we do something because this person was really going through the emotional trauma. So guess what people? We started an emotional clearing. Gary wasn't there and this big, big vortex appeared and this poor child jumped out of her body and started reliving the experience of what, what went on at the Aldridge. Now after talking to her, and I, I guess talking to Drew and some of these other people, these people have all been reprogrammed. Now I don't know what her story was, but her father worked for NORAD, and she said that when she was 10 years old, her memory started 
from the parking lot at NORAD because they had taken her to NORAD when she was 10 years old. So we're talking about all this programming. To make a long story short, Gary came back, decided that we weren't doing it correctly, so he took her to his room. And I watched this man. He didn't really understand these big vortexes, and it drained him of all his energy for two days, him and his brother. But we stayed in that group, and we kept the vortex, and finally, we moved the vortex down to his room, we collapsed the vortex, and then when it was all over, we moved it out to the NGNC. Proof that this might have happened the next day tanks were rolling at the in the streets at Izmir. So you see how powerful these oils really are. And thank God, a couple of us in that room knew how to handle vortexes because I wasn't the only one that knew, and we knew how to deal with the grid. Because your government may be sending the Aldridge around spying on us, controlling us, whatever, and we need to work with these vortexes. What was interesting is um, one of the girls from Hannah Kroger's, uh, she works with Hannah, had a room between the room where we were and the room where, where Gary was. She woke up at five o'clock in the morning and she says, Mary, maybe you can explain this to me. There was a little red light that came out of the ceiling, became a big device that started whirling all the lights, and she said she woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning and wanted to know why the CIA was watching her. And a minute that she became conscious of it, it went back down to a pinpoint of light and disappeared. Whenever you move vortexes the way we move vortexes that evening, the government was looking for devices that could move such a vortex. So that's why all of... It was an experiment. Of course, I don't know to this day if Gary understood what went on. Uh, it doesn't matter. The important thing is that you people, once you start working with the oils, you can get into these kind of things because you're releasing the energy from the amygdala, which goes into trauma, and when you start dealing with that trauma, you don't get fearful, you just send it light. And that is what you, we all have to learn to do. I hope this conference, whenever you begin to get fearful, you just start bringing in light into your electromagnetic field and bringing peace and harmony, spin your chakras, whatever you have to do. And if you don't understand what you have to do, guess what, people? There's a whole regimen of Knights Templar out there waiting to work with you. Now what we'll do in the workshop is we'll do some meditations and we'll introduce you to the Knights Templar and we'll start you working with your own personal Knights Templar. I don't really want to do a meditation right now. I usually try to end my, my talks with meditations, but I only have about five minutes. So I think what I'm going to do is open it up to questions, if you have any. And what we've been asked to do is to go to the microphone and ask. But basically, I think one of the reasons why I'm talking right now is because the Knights are willing and ready to start working with all of you. And when we were at the Dowsers, we met some people who, interestingly enough, through Dan Winters and some other people, had started gridding the whole North American continent. And they came up with very much the same thing that we saw at Rinless Chateau. Isn't that interesting? And they were beginning to uh, diagram all of these grids and I think the Knights have been here for a long time. I wouldn't surprise me if they hadn't gridded most of North America, most of Turkey, wherever they worked with. Uh, because when I was in Turkey, the Knights were there too. And I had the opportunity to go to Istanbul, to uh, St. Sophia, which is a large <coughs> church that uh, was first built by Constantinople by raiding all of the temples. Like you went, to, went there and you had all the artifacts from 
from Heliopolis, which is in Egypt, from Diana's temple, to build this massive church. And of course, the knights were never allowed to go into it. Then it became a mosque, and now it's a museum. And the knights, when we went in there, they did a very special thing. They filed in, when I was standing on the balcony watching, they filed in, made a circle under the dome, and if there's any questions, go to the microphone. Uh, and they got off their horses, they had their horses bow, and they bowed in respect because these mosques are centers of grid areas. So what they were doing, why they were doing that, people, is they were retuning that whole area. Yes? This mig migla, <coughs> this, this migla gland, what, in what, what relationship does it have to the pineal and the pituitary? It's all part of the limbic system. It's all interconnected with the thalamus, the hypothalamus, the pituitary, the pineal, and the amygdala. And if you'll notice there, the amygdala is atta attached to the olfactory bulbs, which is right here in your nose. So by smelling, you actually activate that. And that brings balance into that gland, which is the limbic system. Don't ask me too much more because I, it was just very interesting because I thought, that when we were in France, they were talking about this gland being named after the Magdalene. And when we were dancing up there at Rinless Chateau, who should come in but Mary Magdalene herself? And she wore red and white. That's why I was told to wear red and white today in honor of the Magdalene. Countess, do you have a question? Um. Yes, what is the uh, difference between the, can you hear me? Yeah. The uh, Knights of Templar and uh, <coughs> the uh, Cathars. And uh, is it true that um, the uh, Pope uh, actually organized 30,000 men to kill and murder all the Cathars? And were they actually also the Knights Templars? No, they were not the Knights Templars. The Abigensian Crusades, which was about from 1142, it ended at Mount Segur, and uh, I have one minute left. Mount Segur, uh, the Cathars were a group of people that probably stemmed from the education of Mary Magdalene being in the valley around, because that's their area. They built castles, they gridded the area. They were Protestant. And there are many stories and letters from the Pope sending people in there to, to uh, murder them or to get something on them so that they could be murdered. And they said, this is silly. These people are more Christian than you. But the Abergensian Crusades, which were they would put the Cathars in a church and burn the church down, these people knew how to use the grid. And I think at Mount Segur, they were waiting because the grid works off energy. I mean, we discovered that with exploding atomic bombs. They tested them. In other words, I'll talk to you a little bit about it later if some have questions. But they waited until uh, a certain time and then they walked down and I think all those uh, people transmuted themselves out of the crematorium into a higher frequency because they knew how to do that. Okay? Thank you. Uh, my time's up. Do we have question, time for one more question? Nope. 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 We got enough. Okay. I'm a, I'm a professional pianist and concert artist as by a profession and uh, I developed what you call curly fingers uh, joint pain and stiffness level of pain was 15 in the scale of 10 I couldn't open my hand every morning I would have to go to the faucet and have running water, hot water, so I could open my hands. And I went to my doctor, and the doctor said, Vilma, there is no cure, I'm sorry. Goes with aging, right? So I did not accept that. I, I knelt down to the Lord and said, Lord, nothing is impossible with you. You can even raise the dead and just curly feet. <laughs> Just cut your fingers, Lord. Lord, please 
This is the only thing I know. Playing the piano, that's it. I don't even know how to cook. <laughs> so Lord, Lord, you gave me the gift of music. Lord, please do something. So one day, Michelle Louvel calls me up and I said, wow, this is my answer prayer. And you know, she didn't even send me a video about photo therapy because I trusted her. She was my friend like 10, 15 years ago. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, she calls me up. I said, wow, I was screaming. And then she said, Vilma, there's something here. What is that? I have curly fingers. Oh my God, you're the one I need. <laughs> and not only one finger, darling. All the ten fingers. Look, look at me, Jay. Ten fingers. They were all crooked. Mine, look at mine. You see the middle finger? See? It's now straightened out. My, I can't believe this. You know, I said, Lord, my livelihood. I depend on this on my fingers. So she said, order me right now, Mijay. Tonight. I need it now. Without knowing about phototherapy, okay, nothing. Because she said, it's not straightening up, okay. So the following few days, the veil came to my house. Listen to this. I said, in the scale of 10, what was my level of pain? 15. The bell comes, okay? Put an X39 in the back of my neck, and I sway right here on my finger. And he counted. I cannot believe he counted for 10 seconds. I said, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. What's the level of pain? I was pinching my finger. Because I couldn't believe zero pain in 10 seconds. I love you, Mijay. I love them, my angels. Mijay and Lovell, I owe them my life to them. It changed my life. And now only did I realize what I'm paid free. I can play the piano, practice for hours, and it's no pain. There's no pain. I, I'm not even taking painkillers. No painkillers. Why? The doctor said, painkillers, Vilma, it's going to damage your kidneys and liver. So I said, oh my God, I offer this to you, Lord. So now, I am so blessed. My prayer is this. Listen to this. I don't call it a business. I don't call it networking. I call it a mission. So I invited all my classmates from the Philippines. I called them up. You know, I said, oh my gosh, listen to this. You know, I, I told my story. I told my story. And then, oh, thank you, my angel. <laughs> uh, would you believe? I called up with just my phone. Hundred plus people. All the way from Philippines, Indonesia, Japan. I have people from there just by calling. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm here. laughs>